all eyes are on this potential tropical system in the Atlantic. Most guidance has hinted at a more westward shift and now indications possibly put the placement of this area of disturbed, this low pressure center, somewhere in the vicinity of the Eastern Gulf of Mexico by late this weekend. So let's take a look at the satellite picture going forward so we can keep you well ahead of the storm. We've been tracking this tropical wave for about a week now that really came off the coast of Africa, pretty much a formidable wave, continued westbound, continued through the Windward Islands. It's now near Puerto Rico, and you can still see it's just an area of disturbed weather, an area of showers and thunderstorms, and it's remained on the weaker side, and that's one of the reasons why it has now favored more of a, a westward shift. Typically, a stronger system tends to lift further northwest and eventually possibly out to sea, but this system has continued to remain on the weaker side, heading through the Dominican Republic, through as well as Cuba, and it's likely going to get on the eastern side of the Gulf of Mexico right there into late Sunday time frame. But if we take a look at the update from the National Hurricane Center this morning, it still has it as a 60% probability of forming into a tropical storm. If it does do that, it'll take the name Debbie. So it's not going to be anytime soon, likely over the next two days. It still potentially has a 10% probability as it has to continue through the Dominican Republic as well as Cuba. So you got a lot of land mass this is going to traverse over. But once it gets into past Cuba, once it gets into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, we are looking at more favorable type conditions. And now it has it about a 60% probability. If we break it down for you on the overall ensembles on the EPS guidance, Yes, we get to that 72 to 120 hours out. That puts it right there through that Sunday, likely Tuesday time frame, heading into early next week. Right now, it's got about a 40, 50, if not somewhat 60% probability this could form into at least a tropical depression or possibly a tropical storm as it gets into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Let's break down the overall ensemble guidance on the European because, again, this has been a noticeable shift in the overall ensembles. Most ensembles had this to become a little bit stronger type system just north of Puerto Rico and continued through the Bahamas. And most indications a couple days ago were essentially essentially off the southeast coast and then possibly ringing up to the southeast coast or even moving out to sea. But now a much weaker system has allowed to keep this system more westbound and now we're seeing a lot more indications more or less most of the ensembles actually put the placement of this low pressure center within the eastern gulf of mexico by the time we head into sunday through early part of next week and the gfs guidance is pretty much on board now so now we have both global model model you know hinting at the same type of situation where we could have a that area of low pressure just kind of be in there heading into that Sunday, Monday, Tuesday time frame. So let's break it down. So here we got the high pressure. We've seen the hottest temperatures. Of course, this is the first day of August now. A lot of areas, you know, this August is the hottest month of the season. And yes, we're going to be feeling it in a big way with a lot of heat advisories, excessive heat warnings, plenty of triple digit temperatures while much of the ohio valley just keeps getting inundated with a beeline with more of a, a northwest flow we've seen some stronger th storms yesterday big time wind producers we're going to see even str some strong storms today and i think that continues to at least for several more days as much of the same areas will be continued under that heat dome and if you're under that northwest flow you're in that setup where you just have a conveyor belt of storms traversing across the northwest flow down to the southeast and going to be some higher wind producers in fact uh, we've got numerous of those heat advisories right so let's look at this so man the heat has just been intense for the west coast especially idaho i mean up there in boise 108 folks i mean they've had some crazy hot temperatures this season and even montana they're going to be cranking up 105 plus today and all those areas in orange essentially from kansas to oklahoma to texas 
much of Arkansas through the southeast, really all the way up the coast, folks. I mean, the heat advisories are going to be prevalent with 105, feels like temperatures, all the way up the eastern seaboard through the Carolinas, all the way up into Washington, D.C., Philly, New York, even all the way up to Boston. Yes, we got plenty of heat on the way and plenty of storms as well. Here's some of the breakdown from the Storm Prediction Center from last night as those storms likely got its act together in and around Minnesota, those areas in Nebraska, Kansas. I was looking at some of the storm reports. Man, some of the big time hell producers, you know, 2.75, three inch. So we're even, even some isolated four. I think you even saw one report of five inch hail in Nebraska. Crazy storms and intense winds. They had some intense winds that moved through Nebraska, through Iowa last night. I think Omaha checked in around 90 miles an hour at the airport. Yes, there's definitely some intense storms on the northern periphery of that ridge, complements of that northwest flow, and we're going to be seeing that again with another setup, likely not as intense as the ones we saw yesterday, but nonetheless, we've got some storms this morning, and they're going to have yet another round that's going to come through, and th these also are going to be the highest threat would be your wind threat, and that's why we do have a slight risk for severe storms in and around the Illinois region again, back into uh, Indiana, through areas of Ohio, and eventually heading into Kentucky as well. And yes, you can't roll out an isolated tornado. And again, you could pick up some decent sized hail, likely not as intense as one yesterday, but still with all the Cape values, the extreme amount of moisture, the water vapor in the atmosphere, those can be pretty severe and cl climbed for some pretty high cloud tops but further south yeah we're still dealing with that saharan dust right so we've we've dealt with some rounds and rounds of this and i think this is the last batch but this could be a more concentrated batch that's going to land over texas today portions of oklahoma into arkansas as well as into louisiana and even could swing into portions of mississippi as this came from the african coastline rail so once this dies down, I do feel that's going to start to wane and typically does as we get deeper into uh, the month of August. And that's one of the reasons why we'll have more waves start to form as well. And we'll start to see the tropical activity start to ramp up. But yes, going into tomorrow, that continues to first traverse off that northwest flow. Those storms will continue to burst at southeast. Now we put the placement of the heavier rains and the storm activity through the Ohio Valley, heading into Kentucky again, back into West Virginia, as well as into the Pennsylvania region, and eventually sneaking into portions of Virginia, as well as into the Carolinas. So if you break it down over the next 24 to 48 hours, here's where the heavier rain swath will be. So again, we'll likely have more storms you know, getting up here into Minnesota through Wisconsin, but eventually heading into, uh, you will have another round come through uh, Illinois, but really intense round that comes through Indiana, as well as the Kentucky. Numerous, uh, we'll, we'll have a lot of high wind threats as well, and those will continue with lighter amounts of precipitation as you get further in into the coastline. But here's some of your wind parameters, and it's Pretty, pretty accurate, folks. We were looking at this the other day. 86 miles an hour, it topped out. Yes, we had confirmed 90 mile per hour winds. Now it's topping out around 77 miles an hour. So not as intense, but still nonetheless, some of those could be approaching that 70 mile per hour range, especially for those areas into Indiana, getting into Kentucky and portions of Ohio for the next 24 to 48 hours. So be on the lookout for these big time straight line winds could have some microbursts, some downburst winds with this type of activity in the heat of the afternoon, early evening time frame. But by Saturday, what's going to be steering this little tropical entity there into the Atlantic is this high pressure and keeping it on the weaker side with this high pressure kind of backing off just slightly off the west to further west. This would allow the steer this system a little bit further west as well. So it's going to be able to sneak through and get into Cuba by then and eventually head into the eastern side of the Gulf of Mexico. And then once it gets there, yes, this could be a very heavy rainmaker for the state of Florida as we'll be watching this deep tropical moisture, this higher water vapor content 
just kind of getting sitting there and it could be a conveyor belt of heavy rain that's going to move through the state of florida really beginning on sunday with this tropical type entity but what i'm concerned about as we're going to be kind of have going into more of a lower steering current so we'll have this very heavy rain with this conveyor belt of moisture through much of the panhandle of florida through south florida as well up into the coast of georgia to the carolinas all the way up to the east coast with this just kind of tropical type moisture on on going into sunday but here's the breakdown so most indications here's the latest icon so i kind of showed you the difference between the the global models of the you know the gfs and the european here's the icon continues to possibly strengthen this to a weak maybe tropical depression to, on sunday getting into that sunday time frame but what's going to happen is is this high pressure that backed off to the west coast on on saturday is going to be coming back over much of the central plains and all that's going to do is to kind of wreak havoc on what this system is going to be ended up into the gulf of mexico and if anything it's going to be putting it even lighter steering currents so it's going to be fighting a trough that's going to be coming on off the northwest flow and this can be fighting this high pressure center so it gets kind of stuck it's not going to be able to pull much further west and it can't go north so it just might even start to slow down and if not at some point stall so there's a lot of uncertainty with this type of system but nonetheless what is more certain now is it looking like a big time rainmaker for the state of florida and going into monday we're going to be watching that rain start to intensify especially into the panhandle getting much into central florida so florida's got to be on the high alert uh with this particular system especially with this being kind of right side loaded into this low steering currents and yes you're going to get model guidance is going to be printing out some crazy amounts I and mean, i've just kind of showed you the difference here here's one of the latest gfs runs right crazy amounts like this only would happen if it stalls out and this is more of an outliner but i'm just going to kind of show you the difference in some of these insane model runs when you have a area of low pressure with two to three inch water content values in the gulf that's able just to park and stall and sit there right i mean no i don't think it's going to rain 42 inches in the panhandle i'm just kind of showing you the difference of these models because again six hours later you get a completely different scenario right so it doesn't stall it out stall it out as much and continues to be on the move so you're going to be seeing these wobbles in these model guidances every four to six hours right but we always kind of look at ensembles and we look at all the all the broader guidance to kind of give you a, a hint but what's kind of coming together is yes it's going into the eastern gulf of mexico and it's likely going to have low steering current so we'll have to watch this i don't think it even becomes anything possibly until you know sunday monday or tuesday if week if that most guidance has it as a, a, a you know just an area of low pressure you know all the way up to a hurricane right so well i definitely have to watch this as we're going to have very low steering currents but right now the overall blend of the numerical models kind of look like this so you know where the placement ends up is yet to be determined so we'll have to watch this deep area of convection if that lands inland we'd be looking at some copious amounts so right now we're hinting at anywhere from 6 to 12 inches of rainfall for portions of Florida and it could even be more so if you live into the New Orleans area through Mobile and pretty much all the way into Florida you need to be on the lookout for this particular system that likely is going to be starting to get impacts from this system as early as Sunday, but it could be a long week ahead next week as this could literally kind of stall out and have low steering currents aloft. And this could be meandering, if not stall, in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico or just right offshore and dump a copious amounts of rain. So I will keep you well ahead of the storm. So I appreciate you guys watching. Do like this video. Definitely hit the subscribe button and catch my next update. Wire protect you before and after storm.